Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall and in this video I will show you how to enable remote desktop in Windows 10 and 11 and then make a remote desktop connection to another computer on your network. So first we'll enable remote desktop on this Windows 11 system. This will allow another computer to be able to connect to this computer through remote desktop. You can start by hitting the Win R key, Windows R keys and then type in system properties advanced then in this window go to the tab remote it will be set by default to don't allow remote connections to this computer turn this on and hit apply and now this computer will allow an incoming remote desktop connection to it and then if we want to make a connection to another computer we can hit the Windows key plus R again, and this time type in MSTSC. Hit enter, and now we have the remote desktop connection application. In this case, the computer name that I want to connect to is desktop1. And if your username is cached here, you can always just use a completely different name. And if you're in a network where the computers are joined to a Windows domain, then you want to specify the domain name plus your username, like this. And then your password. If you're not on a domain and you're part of a home group, which is the default for any individual computer that's not part of an office network, the domain of the computer is always the computer name. So desktop one is the name of a computer that I'm connecting to, which means it's also the domain of that computer. And my account is part of desktop one's domain. Enter my password. This is just verifying that I have the right computer desktop one hit yes here and now we are connected to our remote computer and to close a remote desktop connection all you have to do is hit the close button and that disconnects it automatically disconnect yes now we're back to where we started and once you've enabled the remote desktop on the computer that you want to be able to connect to if you can't connect to it, it could be because your network profile is set to public, which it usually defaults to if it doesn't know the network. You can change your network profile to private, which then allows incoming remote desktop connections by going to settings, network and internet, and properties. If you've enabled the remote desktop on the computer you want to connect to, and this is set to public, the incoming remote desktop connection request will get denied. It will not get through the firewall. By changing it to private, it opens up the remote desktop port in the Windows firewall, which then allows the incoming remote desktop connection. This setting is also required for file and print sharing on a local network. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more Windows 7, 8, 10, and 11 tutorial videos. Bye.
Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall and in this video I will show you how to create a shared folder on your network. I will show you how to configure a shared network folder. I will show you how to configure a shared network folder on Windows 7, 8, 10, and 11. So first we're going to create a folder in a location. In this particular example, I have a drive that's dedicated for data storage. And I want to put a folder on here and I want to make it available to the other computers on my network. So I can drop data into this particular folder on this particular computer whenever I want from any computer on my network. First I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call this one network share. Then right click it and go to properties, go to the sharing tab, go to advanced sharing, enable share this folder, go to permissions. So by default when you share a folder everyone has permissions. I don't like doing this. I want to limit the permissions to only the exact users who are able to access this folder. And in this case, I'm the only user who's going to be able to access this folder. So I want to remove this and I'm going to add only me. There's my username. And I'm going to give myself full control over this folder. And then hit apply. Next, I also want to configure the NTFS permissions. What we just, the permissions, the permissions that I just configured are called share permissions. Under the security tab are what's called NTFS permissions. And the way it works is that whichever one of these is more restrictive will take effect. So if you are allowed entrant, if you're, if you're, if the permissions allow you to connect via share, but they don't allow you to connect in NTFS permissions, you won't be able to connect. If they don't allow you to connect in share permissions, but they do allow you in NTFS, you won't be able to connect. Whichever one is the more restrictive of the two will take precedent. I like to have these aligned so that I'm allowing only the users that I want to connect in my share permissions and only the users that I want to connect in my secure in my NTFS permissions. So under the security tab, these are NTFS permissions and I don't want authenticated users. I only want me. Unless I a previous user account. <clears throat> so I don't know what this account here is. And oh, God damn. so here I'm going to add my username, check names, desktop one slash Frank, backslash Frank. And here I want to give myself full control as well. So 
So I have a remote desktop connection to the computer that I created this share on. So now I'm going to disconnect the remote desktop connection and I'm going to actually connect to this share that I just created and then put some data in there as if and then put some data in there. And this is how I want to be able to use it on my network. I want a central location where I can drop my data into from any computer on the network. So I'll close this out. Disconnect my remote session. So now I'm actually on a computer in another room and I'm gonna to go to that share and put some data in there. You can do that. Um, by opening a file explorer and then you want to type backslash backslash and then the computer name that that share exists on the computer that I just created that share on is called desktop one now it's going to show me the resources on desktop one that have been shared and in this case I had a, a previous shared folder and then the one I just created and I can click it and go into it because I gave myself permissions to be able to do so in share permissions and NTFS permissions. And now, because I have full control over these folders, I can create data in there. For example, a new text document. Test. Put some data in there. Test. And then save it. And there it is. Now, as long as I log in as myself, I could connect to this share folder from any computer on the network. And then furthermore, if I want to map this as a network drive so that it shows up under this PC as one of the drives, I can also do that. A shared folder is <clears throat> a shared folder is required To map a network drive, you must first have a shared folder on the network. A map network drive is essentially a shortcut to a shared folder. So there are multiple ways to access a shared folder on a network. Uh, this being one of them, what I just did, right? We can do that. We could also browse the network of this computer. And if you get this, you want to turn uh, network discovery on. So we can do that. Click to change this, turn on network discovery. And actually I'll show you how to do it in the network and sharing center. Advanced network settings. So now that we have this share created, we can also map this as a network drive, which will make it show up under this PC as if it were a drive. A map network drive is basically just a shortcut to a folder that is shared out on the network. So if I go back to the shared folder and right click it, go to show more options that's in Windows 11 I think map network drive is one of the drop downs in uh, Windows 10 7 and 8 by default map network drive and then just give it a name uh, a drive letter and I'll, I'll just I'll use Z for this one you could choose any letter you want don't choose typically a B C D or F. I usually use though I I usually leave those available for USB drives and other drives that are going to be plugged in. Try to start with like G or below. 
but you can technically use any except C. It shows you all of the ones that are available. I'm just going to use Z. And I want it to reconnect automatically at sign in. That means it's going to remember my credentials in Windows Credential Manager. So now I have a network share. Now I have a map network drive that is the same shared folder that I created. So now I can access it this way, or I can also just go directly to it. And there's the share. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more computer tutorial, computer systems tutorials videos. For more computer systems tutorials videos on Windows 7, 8, 10, and 11. Thank you.